Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your speaker, Chris McCann. If you'd like more information or to hear more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com. And now, with your evening Bible study, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 19 of Revelation chapter 10, and we're going to be reading verse 11. Revelation 10 verse 11 says, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. We've been looking at um, the Apostle John, who was given the little book and commanded to eat it up, and he obediently did so. And it was in his mouth sweet as honey, which confirmed to us that the little book having been open was the Bible at the time of the end, which God opened up at the beginning of the Great Tribulation. And and it continues uh, to remain open into the Day of Judgment and the information that the Bible is bringing forth as God has unsealed the scriptures is sweet. To the believer's taste, as all the the truths of the Bible are, but it also is bitter in our belly because God has ended his salvation program and the information coming forth from the word of God is like bitter water, as uh, John 7, 37 and 38 informed us that within the believer is the Holy Spirit and out of the belly flows rivers of living water that is coming forth from the Spirit of God through the life of the believer. In the day of salvation, it was as though rivers of living water, and yet uh, now in the day of judgment, it is bitter. Our belly has turned bitter due to Uh, the fact that God has shut the door of heaven and ended his salvation program. Well, now in verse 11, he said unto me, and and, uh, this is the mighty angel who is Christ, speaking to the apostle John who represents the true believer. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. We're going to look at prophesying. We'll, we'll look at uh, several verses that God speaks of uh, prophesying and prophecy. But first, let's not miss the word must. Thou must prophesy again. And, and this word, it, it lets us know beyond any doubt that God is commanding. He's not asking. He's not making a request. He's not saying, now, if if you feel like it, uh, I know that um, you uh, did prophesy, you did carry forth the gospel message to all the world, and you did as I commanded uh, in the days leading up to May 21, 2011, And now we're living in a different time and there are no more lost sheep. Now uh, my command to you is to feed my sheep, to bring the message from the scriptures, the truths from the Bible to all those that have been saved. And they're out there amongst the peoples and nations and tongues and kings of the world. And you don't know who they are, so you must uh, once again bring the message from the Bible to all people. And God is, uh, he's not trying to reason with us, trying to console us, trying to soothe over our hurt feelings. If, uh, if we have um, experienced reviling and persecution and affliction due to maintaining the testimony uh, that Judgment Day would be on May 21. And, and uh, you know, some people, they had their feelings hurt. They joined up to get that message out to the world, and they let it be known that I think that God will bring Judgment Day on May 21 in 2011, 
And then when it did not happen as expected, as they had thought it would, and when the, suddenly uh, the world was mocking and the churches were celebrating and, and their friends and their family and neighbors were saying, well, what happened? Well, the, a deep sense of shame came upon them and embarrassment and, and they, they felt ridiculed and, and they had their feelings hurt. And some of them, oh, they, they, they couldn't uh, abide that. And, and so they distanced themselves from the teaching of May 21. They realized that the power and the strength was with those who doubt, was with those who say, no man knows. Yes, you can, uh, you can be the one to point the finger also and say, you see, uh, I told you nothing would happen. And so some quickly sided with them and they said, now I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to trust in, in the biblical calendar. I'm not going to trust these things anymore. I didn't see anything happen with my eyes. And, and so they, they uh, now stand with those that, uh, that were doing the reviling. And they also, some of them, began to revile God's people who continued to hold on to and maintain that the biblical calendar of history was correct and that the Bible still insists May 21 was Judgment Day. Yes, they learned their lesson very well from the world and from the churches uh, as the churches over the course of the days leading up to May 21 mocked and, and, and ridiculed the message from the Bible concerning the approaching day of judgment. Now, these same people who were the objects of that ridicule, they themselves began to ridicule. And obviously, that's never the, the way of God. And as soon as they involve themselves in it, it becomes apparent that there's something deeply wrong when someone, okay, you, you may uh, be confused, you may be troubled, and maybe you take a step back to examine the scriptures, but but when you, uh, as it were, uh, join the side of the mockers, well, you know that uh, there's nothing from God in that at all. And, and, and so we have to be careful that, and I don't think this will happen with a true believer, but there could be someone, he's, uh, he's sort of gun shy, I think the expression is, someone who uh, is maybe now sensitized to the idea of going out with tracks or, or sharing a message that relates to time and judgment uh, because of the critical response that came as a result of May 21, 2011. And we need to realize that, number one, God is not asking us. He's not saying, if you don't mind, he is God. He is the creator. He is Lord. And he is commanding us. It is not an option. It is not something that we can choose to do uh, when we feel like it. God is commanding us now, at this time, thou must prophesy again. And uh, he is giving us direction, just as he did in the book of Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 50, when this same issue was raised by God in uh, verse 2 of Jeremiah 50. He says, Declare ye among the nations and publish, and set up a standard, publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. That is, Babylon has fallen, and historically Babylon fell at the end of 70 years, and that 70 years represented and, and pointed to the Great Tribulation, and then Satan's kingdom falls at the end of the Great Tribulation. And May 21, 2011 was the exact 8400th day of the Great Tribulation, the end of the Great Tribulation. And then um, judgment transitioned from the churches to the world. 
and we are to publish. We are to conceal not. We're not to hide this information. We are to say God gives specific instructions. Babylon is taken. Babylon is fallen. And the Lord Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God is victorious. That's what we are to prophesy. And we must do this. Let's look at this word must. And we're going to look just in the Gospel of Luke. It's used in other places in a similar way. But this just makes it easy for us to stay in one Gospel. In Luke 2, in verse 49, it says, And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business. And that is the 12-year-old Jesus Christ who must be about his father's business. Of course, he came to do the will of the father. In Luke 4, in verse 43, it says, And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. Uh, uh, There's a necessity that this word involves. In Luke 21, Luke 21 in verse 9, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. In Luke 22, in verse 7, Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. Now there is a good usage of the word must. God gave specific commandments concerning the Passover. It it must be killed on a certain day. If you slay the Passover some other day, then you did not obey God. You did not do as the Bible tells you to do, and that would be unfaithful. And, And therefore, in order to be faithful, you must do it on the day that God says it's to be done. In Luke 24, in verse 7, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Was there an option for how these things were to work out and to take place? No. Everything had to happen according to the uh, determinate counsel that God had foreordained from the foundation of the world. They must take place as God said they would in the Scriptures, or else the Scriptures would not be fulfilled. And finally, in Luke 24, in verse 44, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, the uh, Messianic passages of the Old Testament that, um, that foretold, uh, for instance, in Psalm 22, that the words that Christ would speak on the cross or, or the, um, uh, the, the holes in his hands and in his feet, these things must be fulfilled. And God did fulfill them in the coming of Christ into the world as he entered into the human race. Now, uh, many other verses could be offered uh, that would show the, the absolute necessity when God uses this word must. It, it is in no way considered an option when the Lord says, and again in Revelation 10, 11, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. This is the will of God. And it's the will of God that you partake of the Bible that has been open in the time of the end. We, we are to devour it, we're to eat it up, and, and uh, the only way to do that is when we read, when we study, when we listen and, and learn from the Bible. 
and it will turn our belly bitter. It will affect the rivers of living water concerning that which flows forth from us as as we eat the Bible. There's a response in our life to share the things that we learn and the things that we're learning are bitter things. It turns the water bitter. The, there is no salvation for anyone who will hear these things. That is not the point. That is not why God is commanding us to prophesy. It is not in order that people hear to be saved, but this relates to John 21. After the great catch of fish, then Jesus says to Peter, Peter, lovest thou me? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Feed my sheep. And then a second time. And then a third time. Lovest thou me? Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Feed my sheep. And and that is the task. That is the mission that God has for us. Uh, we We are not to think that we're doing the same thing as always has been done during the day of salvation and and we're not to uh, have any sort of expectation that people might be drawn and become saved, but rather we're just to share that Babylon is fallen. We're to publish it, not conceal it or hide it. We're to state it boldly. Remember, God tells us to have uh, boldness in the day of judgment. Um, and that statement is found in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Now, why is our love made perfect? Well, there's one final um, performance of love. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And what are Christ's commandments for living on the earth in a day of judgment, feed my sheep. Be about the business of sharing the truths from the word of God with those that are saved and therefore send it forth widely so that they might hear. And now in 1 John 4, 17, herein is our love made perfect. When this final task has been completed, then all those that are truly born again will have obeyed Christ and finally completed the obedience of keeping God's commandments right up until the end as they endure faithfully to the end of time. And again, in 1 John four seventeen, Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. That's where we are to have boldness in the day of judgment in this world at this time. And and we boldly say, yes, May 21, 2011 was Judgment Day. We boldly say that God has saved everyone that he intended to save and that there are no more to be saved. And it's bold because... Well, the world certainly doesn't want to hear it. The church certainly doesn't want to hear it. Uh, And who does that leave? It only leaves the elect out there that would receive this kind of a message. And and so there will be those that will uh, intensify the reviling. They'll they'll increase the mocking. And there will be all sorts of accusations these people are so stubborn and prideful, they just won't let it go. They're afraid to admit they were wrong. And, and of course, it has nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. It, it's far easier um, to admit you're wrong and, and uh, to give in to the pressure. And um, th- then the world will not oppose you. Then the churches will not oppose you. And all of, all of that pressure uh, to conform to what they want you to do would go away. And, and yet, but the child of God cannot do that, despite what the world thinks. And, and the world is our family. The world is our neighbors. The world is all around us. And certainly, 
uh, their their uh, thoughts and ideas about us uh, impact us, and and we don't relish the idea of holding on to something that they disdain. Yet the child of God holds on not out of pride, uh, not out of uh, stubbornness, or, no, but because God won't have us do it any other way. Uh, we we hear his voice, we respond to the voice of Christ, and we cannot respond to the voice of strangers. Well, again, thou must prophesy. And we looked in our last study at Second Peter chapter 1, which said we have a sure word of prophecy in verse 19. And verse 20 told us, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And verse 21 stated, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Three times God identifies prophecy with the scripture. The Bible is the prophecy of God. In Revelation 22, it says in verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. You see, the whole, the whole book is a prophecy. In verse 10, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And then uh, those verses were familiar with in verses 18 and 19 of Revelation 22. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Uh, this is why when God speaks of your sons and daughters shall prophesy, as he does in Acts chapter 2, that it has to do with sharing the Bible's teaching, with declaring what the Bible says, because the Bible is the prophecy. The prophecy is another name for the whole Bible. And, and so when we share anything from the Bible, we are prophesying. And, and God uh, uses this figure for instance, in Revelation chapter 11, in verse 3, concerning the two witnesses. Revelation 11, verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So the two witnesses are the witness of the Bible, which is the prophecy during the church age. And God's people prophesied what the Bible said during that period of time from 33 A.D. until 1988 A.D. For 1955 years, they prophesied. And the 1260 days uh, are a, a time reference to represent the actual time of 1955 years of the church age. And then we know in Revelation 11, in verse 7, it was also referring to the two witnesses. And when they shall have finished their testimony, or their prophecy, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And, and so that period of prophecy ended with the end of the church age. The two witnesses are lying dead in the street. They... The power of the Word of God uh, that, that was empowered by the Spirit of God in the congregations was removed, and that left the Bible as a lifeless thing in all churches of the world. There was no more um, power of the Scriptures to save sinners within any church for the uh, duration of the Great Tribulation period. But after 2300 evening mornings, which is um, uh, spoken of as three and a half days here, the two 
witnesses or two prophets stood upon their feet. And then once again, the gospel began to go forth into the world in September of 1994 as God once again evangelized the world through his word, the prophecy, and by using his people to send forth that prophecy outside of the churches and congregations. They operated in the world. And so uh, it could be said they were prophesying again. Uh, uh, That was a second time. They prophesied throughout the church age. They prophesied again during the short season of the latter rain, which was within the Great Tribulation, and God saved a great multitude through their prophecy. But that prophesying to the people of the world, um, that was carrying forth the living water, the words of life, as God saved many from all the nations and tribes and tongues. But then following that, their prophesying was completed on May 21, 2011, and Judgment Day came. And now in Revelation 10, which is set in the context of Judgment Day, God is speaking to his people and saying, Thou must prophesy again. Now we tend to think that again um, has the idea of a second time. Well, it just means again. It could be a second or a third time. For instance... In uh, Matthew 26, we'll find this Greek word translated again. It it would be pronounced palin. In Matthew 26, in verse 42, it says, He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. So there, God helps us. He shows us that again can refer to the second time, and again can refer to the third time. Again just means again. It could be a fourth, a fifth, however many times. And so when the Lord commands, thou must prophesy again. Yes, you prophesied during the church age, my people. Yes, you prophesied outside of the churches during the latter rain, my people. Now you must prophesy in the day of judgment. Thanks for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies. You can hear these studies Monday through Friday over Pal Talk, Skype, eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over your phone. For more information or to hear other studies, visit www.ebiblefellowship.com. Until our next study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.